Hi everyone, welcome back to Yoga Magnificat with Ms. Bia. And today we have a nice little relaxation class that's going to start with a bit of a warm up. So it's a little bit different than your regular bliss or relaxation stretching yoga. Um, we'll start with a few movements to warm up the muscles, get the blood moving, especially if you've been sitting still for a long part of the day. Um, so we'll start with uh, some simple sun salutations, some warm-up moves, and then get right down into the stretching. So for this class, I recommend having perhaps a block, a strap, maybe a bolster. And if you don't have a bolster, take um, a throw blanket and fold it in a few times just to create some padding. So with that said, I'm going to invite you to start at the top of the mat in mountain pose. So let's start nice and tall. Feet about hip distance apart. Think about squaring off your center of gravity between your feet and then also between your toes and your heels. You can even rock back and forth a little bit just to see how you feel in, um, in your body right now, especially if it's the first time today that you really connected with yourself. With that said, let's bring the hands down by the sides, roll the shoulders up and back, let the shoulder blades slide down. Take a deep breath in. Exhale fully, slowly to the bottom. And again, breathing in deep and slow. See how long you can make this breath. Same thing, taking your time, letting the breath out. One last cycle of breath, breathing in and breathing out. Let's circle those arms up and around towards the ceiling. Look at your thumbs, stretch your spine long. Inhale to reach up, exhale, look forward, take the hands down. Inhale twice more, lifting high, look at your thumbs. Exhale, look forward hands down by your sides. Inhale last time, look up, extend. This time looking at your thumbs, draw a line down your body, fold forward, hinging from the hips, then bend your knees slightly and see if you can touch the floor. Again, if you cannot use a block, place it underneath your hands at whatever height suits you. And if this is even too low for you, use a chair in front of you and that can help alleviate any stiffness, tightness in your hamstring. Let your head fall forward. Tip a little bit of weight forward into the center of your feet and into your fingertips. Let your head drop, looking back behind you. Take a deep breath. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift, hands on thighs or shins and straighten the legs and shoot the crown of your head forward. Bend the knees, inhale, lifting high. Mountain pose, hands to heart. Let's do this one more time and then progress into our first sun salutation. Inhale to lift. Exhale, fold forward, hinging at the hips. Hands come towards the floor block or chair. Dropping the head completely. Inhale, hands on shins or thighs. Press nice and long. Think about turning into a number seven. This time, bend your knees, reach for the floor, and step one foot back at a time, coming to your choice of plank or modified. From here, you can put your knees down if you wish. Lower down by bringing your elbows close to your ribs. Now from here, I want you to fire up your low back and your glutes. So squeeze your glutes, press the tops of your toes down, and then without using your hands too much, assist your way up through the shoulders, your lower back firing, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Baby Cobra, exhale lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Last time. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Tuck your toes, elbows close to your body, helping yourself squeeze up into your modified plank. From here, you can stay back into your child's pose, like so. Or you can spread those fingertips wide, tuck your toes, Sorry, untuck your toes and walk your feet in a little, pressing your hips up into downward facing dog. Deep breath in, pedal out your feet. So bending one knee at a time. Breathing in. 
breathing out. Let's create a little flow here. So stretch back, place your knees on the floor, coming into a modified plank. From here, untuck your toes, lower your belly, come to a high cobra. Stretch out the belly muscles, the front side of your body. Exhale, bring your head down, push into your hands, roll back into either child's pose here or downward facing dog. You decide what works for you today. Let's do that a couple more times so we get used to the flow. So we'll come forward, put the knees down, untuck the toes and press up into a high cobra. Exhale, roll it back, child's pose or down dog. So you could stay there in child's pose or lift the knees up, hips high. Thread the belly button back towards your spine and then let's do that one more time. Come forward, drop your knees, look forward. Untuck your toes, open up that chest. And then from here, sink it back into a nice static child's pose. So we'll bring ourselves all the way back, hips towards the heels. Now, if your hips are really high, don't worry. Just wor think about bringing your bo upper body down, putting your head onto the floor or block. Take a deep breath and sink it back as far as you can. Inhale and exhale. Slowly press into your hands, looking forward. So we'll step the right foot forward and then the left foot forward. Coming into our halfway lift. Bend the knees, come all the way up, circle those arms towards the sky. And this time bring the hands behind you, clasp and interlace the fingertips. Press the fists down towards the earth. Open your chest. Take a deep breath in. Keep your gaze forward. Try not to look up right now. As you breathe, think about broadening across the pectoral muscles, across your collarbones, and just hold it here for a couple more breaths. This is really good, especially if you're hunching over a table or desk or computer all day. Posture is actually really important for your health. So we're going to think a little bit about how we sit and move during our day. As you can see, I've got a ton of hair. I've called my hairdresser, but I haven't heard back from him. So uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> right now I'm having trouble communicating because it's, I have a big shield of hair in front of me in the camera. So you have to bear with me for this practice. So we're going to keep going here in our sun salutation. Let's take the hands by our sides. Inhale to lift up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Bend your knees, contact the floor, step one foot back and then the next. You can lower down, you can do a chaturanga, you can do whatever you like. Just make your way to the floor, belly and then chest. Inhale, try for a baby cobra. So toes on the floor, glutes are engaged. Come up, squeeze your shoulder blades and keep your contact minimal through the hands. Breathe in through the small of your back. Feel those spinal muscles firing up. Exhale, lower down. Tuck the toes. Elbows squeeze close. Press into those palms and lift up. Try a child's pose or downward facing dog. If you're in down dog, go ahead and pedal out those heels. Really get those calves and those hamstrings warmed up. All right, here's where we're gonna to transition to a knee lunge. So we can put the knees down. We're going to sneak the right foot forward. So if you find that having your knees on the floor is difficult, this is the time when you can either use a bolster or a rolled up blanket. I'm gonna show you with my bolster how that might work. So what I like to do is go ahead and kneel on my bolster or towel. Um, and I'm going to take my right foot forward. I'm just gonna walk it up. And then I'm going to be a little bit higher up here, but as you can see, I've got my left knee down on that nice cushy uh, blanket or bolster. So you could walk your right foot a little bit further forward. So notice that my knee never surpasses uh, my toes in this extreme fashion. I want that knee to move back or slightly behind, okay? Now notice that my left hip, I don't want it to be directly on top of that knee. I want it to be forward. So think of the angle coming down and opening that angle between the knee and the left knee. Okay, see the difference? 
So we're going to hold on to the right thigh, making sure that we've got this nice openness through the left hip flexor. And then sit up nice and tall. Maybe take the left hand and stretch it back. Breathing in. Breathing out. Now you can decide how far back you want to reach or you can just stay upright and enjoy uh, more of a passive stretch. Exhale, bring your hands to either side of your foot. Might need to use a block underneath that left hand just to help you up. And then straighten that front leg, tip the toes up, use your block, maybe two blocks or even a chair in front of you to hold on. I like to put my right hand on my shin. So from here, stretching the uh, quad, uh, sorry, the hamstrings on the right side. Let's take a deep breath. Exhale, hinge forward a little bit. So I'm keeping my back fairly straight. My right knee can be a little bit bent. I've got really tight hams, so uh, it seems like they're always tight. <laughs> so I always have to adjust with a little bit more of a bend. And then when I soften, I can feel that muscle yielding and becoming a little bit longer so that I might um, sink back a little more, maybe come down towards the floor, deepening that stretch. Again, you decide. All right, let's come back. Let's keep the left hand on this block. We're going to make it a little bit lower, so make sure your palm is flat against that block so you're not tempted to knock it off because we're putting weight on that left hand. Take your right hand and peel it up towards the sky. Your whole upper body is turning towards the right chest, and belly button, feeling the right shoulder on top of the left shoulder for a nice low lunge twist. Release your left inner thigh. Notice if you're clenching in between those legs and then slowly right hand comes to the floor. All right, so let's do the other side. We're just gonna sneak back the right foot and land the knee on the blanket or bolster. Switch the block to the right side. And I'm going to get nice and high here, walk my left foot forward. So again, I don't want my left hip to be on top of that knee. Sorry, my right hip. Um, I want to be a little bit forward, so I'm gonna sneak the left leg forward and then come forward a little bit more until that knee stops on top of the ankle. And I've got a nice wide open diagonal line from the left knee to the right knee. So coming into a nice hip flexor stretch, leaning into the pelvis here, lift up, maybe tip back the thumb a little more in space, open up the chest, breathe deep through the nose and out through the nose. So we're just holding it here for at least three breaths. If you know that you're tight in your hamstrings, maybe you've been running or doing some other kinds of activities, um, you might want to stretch a little longer. You can hit pause at any time. And then we'll slowly bring the right hand down onto that block. We're going to use that block to help shimmy the hips back. You can use your left hand to hold onto the floor or the shin. And then just begin to think about elonging, elonging, <laughs> elongating through the top of your head. Sit forward a little bit more, so still keeping the back flat. I'm hinging down towards that foot. Playing with gradually straightening that knee a little bit more each time. So just remember that the goal of the stretch is not to achieve a perfectly straight leg. The goal is to feel a sufficient stretch in some of these target areas. Even if your leg is quite bent, um, not a lot of people are open enough to be really extreme in this position for straight, straight legs. Don't make it worse for yourself, especially if you suffer from sciatica. So for positions like this where you're forward bending with a straight leg, take it easy, put a bend in that knee, play it safe. Let's bring that left foot forward. Move your block so that it is nice and flat. Put the right hand down on it. This time, turn your chest, your belly, and your shoulder will be on top of your right shoulder. Take the left hand to the sky. Breathing in, breathing out. Again, let your hips sink a little bit. Notice if you're really kind of clenching to keep yourself in this position. See what you can relax. Just enjoy that lovely stretch, a little rotation through the chest, the spine, a little stretch through the hips and through the hip flexor.
Slowly bring that left hand down. We're going to bring those knees back together. We're going to hop off our bolster or blanket and just move our props to the side. All right, we're going to do a little bit more warming up before we sit down for some more uh, concentrated stretches. So we're just going to make our way up to standing. And we're going to turn and face the long edge of the mat. Maybe you want to change the direction as long as you can see me easily. We're going to start with some warm-ups that require the length of the mat. So we're going to start to walk the feet apart. And you want to walk your feet apart far away enough that you feel a little bit of a stretch uh, between your feet and the mat. So to begin, we're going to start opening up these hips a little bit and the hamstrings, warming up the quads and the glutes. So point your toes slightly out into a V and we're going to begin with some side to side side lunges. So begin with the right leg, you know, put a little bend, make sure that knee again does not pop past the toe. Just keep it right on top of the ankle. Upper body is tall and firm, core is drawn in. Now we're just going to bring our hands kind of like a genie arms, like one on top of the other. Core is drawn in as you push that right leg straight and bend the left leg. Take it slow, transitioning from one side lunge to the other. Whenever we rush in any of these movements, we do uh, rely on momentum a little bit too much. So taking it slow really activates those muscle fibers to have to recruit them and make them work with a little bit more effort. Good. So when you straighten that right leg, make sure you're pushing, pushing, pushing. Stop and hold, squeeze your glutes. Push, push, push left leg. Stop and hold, squeeze your glutes. Same thing, one after the other. Keep the head tall, chest tall. Try not to stoop forward looking at your feet. You want to have everything nice and tall, head over the hips. All right, so from here, we're going to stay in horse pose. You can bring your feel, heels in a little bit if you feel like they're too wide. Bring your toes out a little bit more if you can and sink down. So we're going to start with a little bit of a inner thigh glute <laughs> quad work here. We're just going to pulse for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Straighten up. All right, from here, bring your toes to face forward, so much so that your heels will be uh, out more than your toes, a little bit pigeon footed, and we're going to go for a wide angle um, fold, standing fold. So begin by placing your hands on your thighs, hinge forward, legs are straight and pushing into the edges of your feet. Walk your hands down the sides of your legs until maybe you can reach down and touch the floor. Now, if you're just on your fingertips here and you're feeling a little bit of tightness in your legs, just stay wherever you are. You don't have to get down very low. Maybe begin shifting from side to side with your torso, shifting a little bit of weight between the right hand and the left hand. And then slowly lower your head and then bend your knees. Straighten the legs, bring your head down. Lift into a halfway lift, bend your knees. Straighten, look behind you. Come forward, bend those knees, straighten, look back. So we're not doing anything too strenuous here. We're just trying to get blood flow going through those legs for a nice little wake up for the body. Not so much that if you're doing this at night, you can't sleep, but just enough exertion to release any stress. All right, let's get the upper body involved here. So we're gonna come all the way up and bring those feet heel toe, heel toe all the way in. So we're gonna start with a little bit of rotation for the upper body. So feet are nice and easy. Keep a bend in your knees. We're gonna start by taking windshield wiper twists from side to side. Make this easy. Don't worry so much about alignment, but I want you to move your hips and your knees and your ankles. So I'm not glued to the floor. And I want you to think about letting go of anything that's kind of got you really wound up and releasing it as though you are a rag full of dirty water that you want to wring out. Maybe inhale one way, 
exhale the other. Inhale one way, exhale the other. Just clear it all out and enjoy that movement. Your spinal muscles twirling around the vertebra, shoulders, chest, all that stuff. All right, let's release that. We're going to move a little bit more into the upper body a little bit more before we stretch. So feet can come back together. This might require a little bit of balance. So we could begin with the hands out in goal post position. We're going to take the right arm and we're going to move it to the left. We're going to take the left leg, so opposite elbow to opposite knee, and we're just going to lift that knee up, come back to center, do the other side, left elbow to right knee, turn and look to the right, put it down. So nice and slow, very slow movement just to warm things up around the core, around the glutes, quads, and shoulders. Good. A couple more like this. And let's come back through center. All right. So before we come onto the floor, we're going to do some standing stretches. So feel free to stay in this long, uh, facing the long edge of your mat. We're going to start in a warrior position. So what we want to do, let's take the left foot and turn the toes in. Let's take the right foot and turn the right toes directly towards the short edge of your mat. So you're setting yourself for warrior facing the right side. And then bend your knee only to the top of your ankle and straighten your left leg. Keep the upper body flush with your hips and then open them up. Then turn your gaze to the right. If you want a little more, just bring your feet slightly apart, a little bit longer of a stance sink down a little bit more, squeeze those glutes. Good. Let's warm up that core a little bit, bringing it back for reverse warrior. Exhale, come forward. Inhale, wave it back. Exhale, wave it forward. Should feel really good just to move the side of the body, open up those hips. And then come into our warrior for triangle. So let's straighten that front leg and reach forward, keeping the chest facing the left side of your mat. So reach, 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 bump your hips back and then lower your right hand down onto your inner thigh or shin and then allow that top hand to become vertical with your bottom hand. Take a deep breath in. Tip your shoulder slightly back so that it feels like you're leaning on a pane of glass behind you. Make sure you're tucking your right hip into your body and that your back foot is really strong and straight. Breathe deep here. We're going to spend a couple more breaths in triangle. You can notice that I'm lowering down my right hand because when I first started, my right inner thigh and my left hip and obliques were really tight. And then the more I, I breathe and relax into the pose, you can see that I'm Oh, I'm sliding. I'm getting down a little bit lower. And some of you may not be anywhere this close, far down. Um, some of you may be still very high up. Please just do what your body's asking you to do. So a lot of modifications are available with a hand on the thigh here or here or even on a block or a chair. So once you've breathed nice and deep, exhale to get out of it. Take your left hand down, bend your right knee, and help yourself up, maybe holding on with your thigh. Now we're not gonna go into a sun salutation, we're gonna straighten that front leg, turn the front toes in a little bit towards the back of your mat, and turn your left toes to face directly to the uh, short edge of your back end. So again, you're coming into warrior this time on the other side without having changed directions. So this time your left knee is bent, your right leg is really straight, and again, shoulders should try to be on top of those hips. So if you're really reaching forward, try to make sure that shoulders and hips are squared, right? Then look to your left hand, get nice and strong by pushing into that back foot, squeeze those glutes, core is drawn nice and tight. 
Let's take a nice little flow with Reverse Warrior. Take it back. Exhale, come forward into side angle. So your left hand can be on the thigh, right hand can reach forward. Inhale, reach it back. Exhale, reach it forward. Inhale, reach it back. Exhale, reach it forward. From here, let's come back to Warrior Two. Straighten the left leg. And now nice and straight legs, reach forward. Take the left hand down to wherever it wants to go, right hand to the sky. And you could stay here, a little bit higher up. That's fine. Your body opens a little more, maybe that left hand slides you down. Be careful to notice that when you're sliding down, your right shoulder does not collapse forward and that your front of your body starts facing the floor. You want everything to be open to the right side of your mat. Okay, so that chest, belly button, shoulder should be up. Like your two-dimensional piece of paper being slid into a ballot, ballot box, right, like a slot. And as your body opens, maybe you can lower down a little bit more. Keep that, those legs nice and strong. Keep the breath flowing. We'll just hold it here for a couple more breaths. These are called active stretches because they do require some muscular activation for them to be held. But at the same time, we are getting some really lovely stretches uh, right through the right hip, obliques, here and underneath the left thigh. Let's bend that left knee, walk your way up, this time coming back facing the left side. We're going to come to the floor at this point for some more static stretches. I'm going to invite you to take a seat, maybe have your blocks and blankets close to you, maybe a strap. So we're going to start with butterfly pose to open up those hips. So feet together, knees apart. You sit how far away from the heels you wish and allow for openness through the hips. Take a deep breath, hold on to your shins. Exhale, come forward. Maybe hold on to the bottom of your shoe or shoes, your feet. Take a deep breath in. Press down into your sit bones, lengthen through the crown of your head. Try not to round your spine just yet. And then as you come forward, use the anchoring of your hands to bend those elbows and gently guide your upper body forward in a hinge. So again, still my spine is straight if I can. If I cannot come forward without immediately rounding, you want to stay up. Keep those, the length of your spine, spinal muscles long, I'm trying to get out of those habitual postures that lend to postural problems. Okay, so even if you're a little bit higher up, perfect. Just stay where you are. Those of you who can come lower, come lower. Take a few breaths. Try to let go of any expectations for yourself. Try to release any unconscious kind of messages that you're sending to yourself. And just let yourself be. If you can't Go any further and you've relaxed as much as you think you can. Now you can round your spine, drop your shoulders and your head. Maybe release the grip of your feet. If your hands and arms can relax on the floor, go ahead, let them be. Slowly make your way back up. From here, we'll bring those knees together. Let's shoot the right leg off to the side. We're gonna bring the left leg in. So your left foot is to the inside of your right thigh. Okay, so from here, you wanna sit center to your sit bones. Lift the arms up. From here, turn towards your right leg, the one that's extended long. You're gonna see if you can bring those hands down maybe to the either side of your foot or leg, maybe to your calf. Now you're gonna hold on so that you can again lengthen through the crown of your head. You can relax through the left thigh. If it can't, try to push it down gently. Turn your body towards the right. Try not to let yourself scoot back over to the center. You wanna be um, facing the right foot as much as possible 
and then walking yourself down. This is where a strap could be helpful. You can put it underneath your foot and hold on like so. Again, if you have really tight hamstrings, don't feel pressure that you've got to go all the way down with super straight legs. You got a little bit of a bend. You don't have to come down so far. Okay, so take your time. Make sure that your left hand's quite anchored so that you also get a stretch through the left side. And then slowly round. Remember to breathe deeply while we're holding these stretches. Deep through your inhale and deep through your exhale. Slowly come all the way up. From here, we're going to um, either hold on to this strap, if you have that strap on, you're going to take your left hand and open it back so that your left hand and your right foot are kind of in the same line. Now, if you don't have your strap, you take that right hand to the inside of that right leg and keep opening, spinning the chest towards the left knee. Okay. So we're going to keep that chest facing the left knee as much as possible as we continue sliding the body. It's like a side bend this time. Side bending over, sliding the right hand towards that foot, and then taking the left hand up and over the head. So we're keeping the left side of the body as kind of in the same uh, place as the right leg. Okay, so we're not bringing it forward or opening it back. And that right arm to block into that leg is helping you keep the rotation. And then see if you can just kind of lean to the right, lean towards the right foot and just let yourself kind of arc into it. Maybe turn your gaze up. If that bothers you, your neck, you can always put your hand behind your head and kind of lean back. Some people like to do that or they like to put their left hand behind their back and kind of open through the shoulder instead. It's really up to you. A lot of us have different neck issues. I know I've got my own, so uh, we might all be looking in different directions for this one. So if it means looking down, you might need to do that as well. It's okay. Let's take one more big breath in. Inflate through your left side. Feel those stiff spinal muscles around your obliques expand. Sitting all day can be really, really unhealthy. It can really damage um, our health um, by way of really being detrimental to the bone structure, muscle, muscular uh, structure. So it's a good idea to have um, a variety of sitting positions throughout your day. Let's come all the way back up. Oh, I can really feel my left side. <laughs> so we want to balance that out. Let's tuck the right foot in and extend the left foot out. Use the strap or not, we're going to come into that forward bend onto the left knee. So sit up tall, make sure your chest is turning and pointing towards your left toes. Left toes are up and not off to the sides. Okay, and then lift up through the spine using your hands to assist. Exhale, hinge forward, and if you cannot hinge straight anymore, those hands come down. So pulling with your hands, you're going to get extra length. Push back into your sit bones. Exhale, come forward. Keep that right leg down, if you can. Keep the right hand anchored so you get this nice stretch through the side. Breathing in. Breathing out. Just stay here with that same rhythm of breath. Just a little while longer. Slowly make your way back up. We're going to make our way to revolved head to knee. So staying here with the feet, we're going to turn the chest towards the right knee. So use your hands on the floor to help assist. Lengthen through your spine. Take your left hand, maybe grabbing that strap if you had it, or placing it to the inside of your left leg. 
Once you're ready, extend your right arm off to the side as though that right hand is in the same diagonal line as that left leg. From here, keeping the chest where it is, we're just gonna slide that left hand towards the foot, keeping everything open as we bend to the left. Maybe look up, again, you decide where you wanna put your top arm, where you wanna look, Make some adjustments that make this a little more easy for you to hold and breathe deeply. Slowly come all the way back up. This time, let's take a twist. So bring the feet out in front. Bring your right knee into your hands. Sit up tall. Left hand comes up. Turn to your right, so towards the same bent knee. Now you're gonna take that left hand and wrap it around the knee. Take your right hand behind you and sit up tall. If you need to, maybe it's hard to reach behind you, use a block behind your right hand. Make sure it's not too far away so you have lots of lift. For some people, pushing down is easier than pushing away. So you want to keep your spine as tall as it can and vertical to your tailbone. Allow yourself to breathe through this twist. Gently unwind, derotate to the left for a second, and come back through center. Straighten right leg, bend your left knee. Same thing here, right hand lifts up, turn to your left, hook it over your left thigh, and then turn, placing the left hand behind you. Again, sit up nice and tall, breathing in. As you exhale, you might notice your tummy going back towards your spine a little, and maybe there's more room for you to turn Again, be mindful of your twists. Uh, you don't want to really kind of strain yourself by going too deeply too fast. So always take them slow and then adjust deepening the angle more and more as you see fit. Let's take one more forward fold, this time bringing the feet out wide, toes up, inhale, lift to the sky, exhale, plant them to the ground. Push into your fingertips, push back into your sit bones, length through the crown of your head. I know I sound like a broken record, but hopefully that'll become more and more natural for you as you make your own practice at home. And then bring your hands forward as your body says, okay, stay up if you need to. Again, never any pressure to bend yourself into a pretzel. If your body says, I'm gonna do that, it's gonna break. <laughs> so you wanna be letting your body yield to the positions, right? You don't wanna crunch them into a mold that doesn't work. Take some deep breaths, walk it forward if it feels good. You're gonna feel a stretch in your low back, also deep into your inner thighs. This is a really great stretch if you're feeling uh, stiff around um, the back side of your body, posterior side. And then let yourself fall forward, rounding. Again, you can use a block underneath your hands if this is too, um, the ground just seems too far away. Use anything that helps to make the position more sustainable, more comfortable. And then make your way back up. All right, let's bring those feet in. We are going to go for a couple more stretches on the floor. So you're going to use the length of your mat. And actually what I want you to do is grab your block, or maybe if you have like a stack of books, um, we're going to lie down on the floor and make sure that it's turned um, this way so that when we slide it underneath the hips, it's underneath the body, underneath your sacrum. So I'll show you in a second. If you want to stay up and watch, go ahead. So feet are close to your bottom. When you lift up your bottom, you're going to slide the block and place it underneath sort of the flat bony part of your 
um, above your tailbone. So it's not right on your bottom. It's just a little bit higher up and you can sort of adjust and see what's more comfortable. Now let yourself just relax into this pose. Set your shoulders down and keep your gaze at the ceiling. Please try to just listen to my voice and not look from side to side because in bridge pose, you want to have um, a neutral neck. Take a deep breath and a deep breath out. Inhale and exhale. One last big breath in. Last big breath out. I'm going to take the right leg, see if we can bring it in. If this is too much for you, you can always do this without the block. You can go ahead and just remove it, put your bottom down and just bring the knee in towards you. Release that right leg, bring your left knee in. Give it a little squeeze. Set that foot down. From here, we're gonna try uh, one foot at a time, straightening the left leg. So you notice there's gonna be a bit of a um, arching in my back. So this is a very soft back bend. And so we're trying to get a little bit more mobility range of motion in that spine that tends to curl forward a lot when we're sitting hunched over a desk. So it's really important that we have a little bit of back bending in our practice, especially if we're not necessarily very um, mobile people during the day. Now, if this feels okay, we're gonna try the right leg to straighten so that the entire body, um, the arms and legs are elongated. If you wanna bring your arms overhead, That'll give you a little more extension in your spine, but you can always put them to a T or by your sides, whatever feels better to you. Good. From here, let your legs relax, tops of the thighs, including the top of your belly and all the muscles in your legs and thighs. Slowly begin to walk it in, bring your feet a little bit closer. Now we're going to press into the feet and gently pop that block off and set the tailbone down nice and slow. Now with any little back bend or big back bend, um, a twist is always a good counter stretch. So let your back lay flat for a moment, breathing in. Feel the small of your back, kind of make contact, make your, like, kind of feel your kidneys kind of ground onto the floor. And then from here, drop your knees over to the right. Arms can open up to a T. Exhale, drop them to the left and go as slowly as your breath allows. Inhaling again. Exhaling, swish them over to the other side. Take your time. From here, let's bring those knees up towards center, draw them into your belly. Take a deep breath and exhale, bring the feet down to the floor. Now, my tablet tends to stop recording at around 45, 46 minutes. So if we cut off, <laughs> I urge you to stay in Shavasana for as long as you feel comfortable. And so I'm going to get us started by closing the eyes, dropping the shoulders, and allowing the arms to relax all the way down to your feet. Let go and breathe. Let your breath fill up. Feel it float back down.
take deep, long sips, feeling every rib, all the muscles around your lungs, around your rib cage expand. Taking a pause at the top before exhaling all the way down. Stay here for Shavasana, or you can end with me. May you have us with you today in your thoughts, words, and heart. Namaste.